Here's a simple question for you. Could computer software as we know it, like these programs, possibly have come into existence if human beings didn't exist? Well, what about our own programming or our own genetic code? Well, the more deeply we delve into it, the more it looks like the same kinds of programs that we've created in our image. So in simple terms, what does this really mean? Genes are the building blocks of protein, and how they express is determined by the combination of four different amino acids, which are represented by four different letters of the alphabet, A, T, G, and C. So we can symbolically decode each gene in any organism, which is what we're doing right now with supercomputers. And if you look at this slide, it's very interesting to note that the representation of a very simple combination of these really resembles one of the old-time computer punch cards. What really got me going in this area was seeing a video by Juan Enriquez, a noted geneticist, on, on the TED website. And the link's on the slide. What Enriquez basically said was that an apple is a computer application. Not like a computer application, but he said it was a computer application, so that when it gets energy from the sun, it executes like an executable file and drops from the tree. And as he looked at the uh, sequence code, he made the point that syntax is critical. How it's ordered, what the nuance of it is, determines literally what it means. So let's compare that genetic code with computer code. If you look at view source in a web page, we see that how the web page is expressed or displayed in a web browser is entirely dependent on the code behind it and the syntax of the code and how those symbols or how those letters or words are put in certain order will determine what gets displayed in the web browser. So how are computer programs like the one we saw in the first slide, Google, Microsoft Office, Photoshop, and so on, created? Well, we know they're pretty complicated, and we know they require generally a programming team and some intelligence and intention because first of all, they accomplish a certain task or else they're not created in the first place. And then they're the result of organized conceptual thought made real through computer code. So the question becomes, can you take the next step with me? Well, then, if the genetic code behind life has the same properties as computer code, then we have to kind of conclude that it's based on something conscious, based on some intention of something or someone that created the code. And this is not an argument for, for intelligent design. I'm perfectly happy to leave it as a mystery and just throw the, throw the question out there. But using some interesting terminology, clearly software is created not only in our image, but also through our mental intentions. So how can it be otherwise that the blueprint for life or genetic code could come into being any other way. Not by accident, but through some consciousness or some intelligence, or and certainly, if we look at its complexity, higher intelligence. The question becomes then, in whose or what's image is life? So now if we really accept or just begin to think about this correlation between our genetic code and what we've discovered or learned or experienced with respect to computer software and computer code, we can think about some things in kind of different ways. First of all, if you look at ancient texts, we can see things, for example, like Noah's Ark, possibly being a parable or a metaphor for backing up data, because someone back then knew that propagating species is a matter of working with genetics, and the Ark is figuratively a flash drive. And maybe our, our entire present computer technology really represents a metaphor or a signpost leading us to intelligent advancement and, and, and a higher state of evolution. Maybe the internet is our nervous system that's evolving in this way. Leads to a lot of interesting questions, and all I'd like to leave you with is the final question. What comes next?